Okay, this section on the Hoppetools rule that we're going to be talking about here typically is taught in a Calculus 2 class. However, the reason why we're covering it now is for those of you that may be transferring to a different school, there's some other schools that actually will cover this in the first semester. So if you transfer there and they expect you to know this already, then you might be out of luck. So that's why I want to cover this now, so then that way you'll have it. Now, if you're continuing on with Calculus 2, you may see this uh, same concept again, um, but at least you've seen it once, you'll be more familiar with it when you see it again in Calculus 2. So let's go into it. Basically what we're doing here is we're trying to find the limits, so we're going to go back to limits again. And when we did limits before, we didn't have any of these situations happening where you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. These are called indeterminate forms, so all four of these actually are considered indeterminate forms. So particularly we're going to be focusing on this type of one where you have a 0 over 0 situation. And if you have 0 over 0 happening, then you're going to have to use Le Hapitul's rule in order to find that limit. Now the reason why we didn't talk about this before is because Le Hapitul's rule has to do with derivatives. So of course we had to learn derivatives first before uh, going into it. And of course since we're talking about applications of derivatives, this would definitely be one of them. So we're, we're looking at a, a situation here where we have a limit as x goes to a. So we're going to say if I put an a in there for the x and I get 0 over 0 situation here, um, and we're assuming that the f and g are differentiable on an interval that's contained the a and then that the derivative uh, at any particular value of x is not equal to zero, which means that if I take the derivative of a constant, for instance, I can't have that you know, happening. Basically, I'm just looking at uh, g prime of a is what I'm looking at here. This is what it says. It says that the normal limit, if I take the derivative of the top and the bottom, that's still going to be equal to the same limit as the original one. So the way that you're going to use this is you're going, to, you're going to start with this, and if you have a zero over zero situation, you're going to keep taking the derivative of the top and bottom, and you keep on going all the way until you don't get zero over zero anymore, or if, if any, any one of these is not zero, then you're going to stop. Okay, so that's basically what this says here. Keep taking the derivative of f and g as long as you keep getting zero over zero. And if either one of these derivatives is not zero, so if this one is not zero anymore, or this one's not zero anymore, if you get a number, then you're going to stop. And whatever number that you en end up with there, that is going to be your limit. So that's how Le Hapitul's rule, rule works. Just keep taking derivatives of top and bottom until you don't get zero anymore. So with that, let's go ahead and illustrate this with an example. Okay, so here's an example we're going to use to illustrate Le Hapitul's rule. We're going to do it with Le Hapitul's, but then we're also going to cover it using the methods we talked about in an earlier video in a previous chapter, so we're going to do that as well. So here's the limit that we have to do. First, you want to check to make sure that the Hapitul's can be applied here. You need to put 3 in the top and bottom. You need to get a 0 over 0 situation happen. That tells you that you're able to use the Hapitul's rule, and we can in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this limit, x goes to 3 of x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. And what I can do is I can keep taking the derivative. So it means I'm going to do the limit as x goes to 3. And then what you're going to do is take the derivative of the top and bottom separately. The derivative of the top is going to be 1. The derivative of the bottom is going to be 2x. Now you're going to plug 3 in there. And if I plug 3 in, this time notice I don't get 0 over 0 anymore. What I'll get is 1 over 6, 1 over 2 times 3. Therefore, that's going to be the limit. That's using Le Hapitul's rule. This step right here was using derivatives. I plugged it in and got the answer. Now, they also asked us to evaluate it using the methods from a previous chapter. Okay, now if I do the methods that we talked about before, this is going to be a review. What you can do here is you can use a more algebraic approach to it where you're going to work with what we have and you can do x minus 3, x plus 3, you can factor the bottom one and then that part cancels. So now we're left with the limit as x goes to 3 of 1, we'd be left there, 1 over x plus 3. And notice if you put 3 in here, you also get 1 over 6. So you get the same answer. So they're showing you that Le Hapitul's rule will work and give you the same exact answer as traditional methods that we've talked about before.